Our first home video features a shark that got a little too close for comfort. This shark jumping into the boat was completely an accident. It had a fish in its mouth and was just trying to get away with it. Probably used a little bit too much power with its tail, ended up in the boat. When you have a number of sharks attempting to feed on the same food source, they'll usually establish a pecking order. The big ones let the little ones know, don't come in here yet. This smaller great white shark just got the message the hard way. This is the shark equivalent of like a slap down. This was a warning bite. This was not intended to actually even harm the shark. And the reason why you see these you know, really tough, you know, war wounded sharks on Shark Week is because this happens all the time. What these tourists experience is absolutely incredible. And the whole reason I bought a 3D television. Holy <laughs> Oh my god. When they throw out the bait and they bring the shark in, well, the shark's in pursuit of the bait. I think it's amazing to be able to see these animals in their true habitat, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're going with an operator that's also got the shark's interest in mind, too, and is operating with safety, not just for you, but for the shark. A shark cage is generally a pretty safe place to be if you're in the water filming sharks. But when a shark is moving that fast, and when they're turned on, look out. You don't need a cage to watch Shark Week, but it wouldn't hurt. Sharks have no hands. They only have a mouth. So when they're curious about something, they display a behavior called mouthing. And what happens is, is if they don't know what something is, they may give it a little test bite to try and figure it out. You know, a test bite on a human being is not a good thing. A test bite on a cage, meh, curious. When a shark tries to rob you blind in broad daylight, let him. Uh-oh, he's gonna take our chum bag. He grabbed our chum bag! He grabbed our chum bag! Well, I think this guy is onto it that the shark might be taking his chum bag. He ripped our chum bag right off. I'll buy you a new chum bag. That is amazing. Replacing a chum bag, $2.99. Having a shark pick its head up and look at you from the back of the boat, absolutely priceless. Oh. Holy. Turns out sharks, much like neighbors, really hate annoying noises. There's a very well-known trick. If you crunch or you actually rub a plastic water bottle, what happens is it sends out vibrations that attract sharks. And that crushing sound is something that sharks will pick up on because they assume it's fish feeding. It can really, really piss off sharks. It's not something that I would ever advise anyone to do. And this is just an inexperienced diver doing something that I feel was kind of foolhardy. <laughs> ever have a day when everything goes wrong? So did this guy. This shark doesn't seem like it's really aggressive towards humans, but it's obviously in a situation where it's stressed. It has like a fishing pole in it, so probably got hooked, pulled out the pole, and it's at the bottom flipping out. It's not really even specifically attacking the diver, it's just thrashing around the place and swims off. Some say the most important part of a great white to avoid is its jaws, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> so that's a shark pooping. <laughs> and I've actually been caught in whale shark poop before. It happens pretty commonly, and it's kind of gross. <laughs> 
I have a question. Is he completely insane? You know, I think it's a, a tourist gimmick. He's not like, you know, doing any magical shark whispering stuff with uh, with electrical sensors or anything. It's just the shark is at the surface, he's right out of the water, you can't really, you know, jump up and grab the guy. <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, it's probably not wise practice. This occurred, I'm guessing, in South Africa on a cage diving boat. I'm pretty sure that the cage dive operator was probably just pushing the shark away from the boat rather than trying to, you know, pull a party trick and pet the shark on the nose. I'm no scientist, but I have a theory about why sharks breach. Because it's awesome. The amazing thing about mako sharks is not only are they the fastest shark in the ocean, they can also jump the highest. Jumps of 30 feet have actually been recorded. 30 feet high. <laughs> Get away from him. He's gonna jump the boat. This is just a natural reaction to the animal being caught. It's just flipping through the air trying to shake its hook. How far does this guy think that shark can jump? They're like 500 meters away. Holy These guys are so fancy, they're even named after what they do when they breach. Behold the spinner shark. It's not hard to figure out why these are called spinner sharks. If you could jump out of the water so high that you could complete 12 360 degree rotations, wouldn't you do it too? Yeah, that's on record. Can you believe that? So spinner sharks are really, really cool sharks. And the way that they feed is they just bolt through schools of fish. Um, they go through real quick and they just kind of snap at all the fish and that causes them to kind of spin on their axis. And when they break the water, they'll fly into the air just spinning. These spinner sharks actually go on spring break, like most uh, people in Florida. So they come down every year in mass, thousands of spinner sharks hunting, but it just looks pretty freaking cool too. Oh my God, he's jumping towards the fight! <laughs> Meanwhile, in overreaction land. <laughs> The shark is obviously reacting to the fact that it's caught. This is a bronze whaler shark. They're beautiful metallic color. I've dove with them quite a bit. They don't pose a risk, usually, to humans. <laughs> if anything will keep these guys safe, it's that annoying screaming. 